Some cities get all of the attention, don't they? Something strange happens in New York and Florida. It's viral on social media within the hour. But strange things happen in the Ozarks all the time, but nobody seems to care. I live in Benton County, Arkansas. Plenty of strange things have happened here, but only one strange thing has happened to me. That's what I want to talk about. I like the strange. When I hear something odd or unexplainable has happened, I run in that direction. I like the mystery of it all. I always wanted to feel like I was a part of something special, and special somethings didn't come through Benton County very often. Until 2016, that is. Two years prior, someone reportedly saw a strange creature wandering through the edge of the Ozark National Forest. It became my fixation. No one could prove that the man hadn't seen what he claimed, and I wanted to see it too. I made myself like hiking, and I went out every day that I could and walked the longest and least popular trails. I just wanted to catch a glimpse of that thing, you know? I wanted to be a part of that story. I was an idiot. A few people took notice of my repeat visits. National Park Service, I guess. I don't blame them for keeping an eye on me. I do blame them for what ended up happening, though. They made me the latest in a long list of Benton County idiots. As I was saying, it was 2016. I was on one of my usual hikes. I didn't notice anyone following me that day. I thought the rangers had gotten bored by then. I spotted something on the trail ahead of me, a small gray furry shape that didn't immediately resemble a fox or a rabbit. I was worried that it might be a little mountain lion cub. I've seen mother lions chase people off of trails. I didn't want that to be the story I ended up in. But what if the cub wasn't a lion, I thought. What if it was exactly the creature I was looking for? I moved closer. When my feet shifted on the ground, the small animal saw me. It turned and pointed its flat feline nose in my direction. Right away, I saw the two horn-like stumps growing from the top of its head. The little critter opened its mouth and made a pitiful mewling sound, like a baby whining after a long nap. It made me smile. It wasn't what I had been looking for, but it was certainly interesting. It was weird, too. Then something screamed from the tree line to my left. It screamed how a human woman might scream, how a human woman might scream if she was afraid for her life. I felt every bone in my body grow cold that very moment. When I turned to look, I could only vaguely decipher the shape of the mother creature from its place in the shadows of the Ozarks. It looked like a big cat. Maybe a lion wasn't so far off. Its face was flat and two antlers protruded from its head. Its tail looked naked too, maybe like a rat's. Maybe it had mange. I wasn't sure then and I'm not sure now. All I'm sure of is that when the beast opened its mouth, it cried in a way that only people should cry. It shrieked at me. It shrilled as it urged me away. I shouldn't have ran. I had gone looking for this thing, right? And I know running is the last thing you want to do when you're caught by a mama defending her young. I ran anyway. Fighting or freezing or backing away slowly, none of that even occurred to me. I ran and I heard it run behind me. It screamed while it chased me. It screamed so loud that I thought my ears might bleed. There was no telling how close it was either, not with a scream like that. Suddenly, I wasn't alone on the trail. I was running past two park rangers. There were more following behind them. I kept running. Only after a half dozen rangers passed me by did I even consider that the monster was no longer behind me. The three gunshots that erupted behind me forced me to hit the ground. I landed on my hands and knees. I felt like my heart and lungs were exploding. When they didn't, I looked up. Some of the rangers were already coming back down the trail, shaking their heads and complaining about the run. I asked in disbelief, hadn't they seen it? No, they said. There was nothing there besides my screaming. Why was that gun fired? I asked. What gun? Even the ranger who emerged from the top of the trail with scuffs from his palms to his elbows insisted that they saw nothing in the woods. They didn't see or hear anything chasing me down that trail. I had never been so mad. When I got back to town, I told anyone who would listen. I told them what I'd seen and how the park service had reacted. 
The park service, of course, spun a yarn to make me look like the imbecile. They told my friends that I was found dehydrated in the woods. I had been drinking, they said, and got turned around. The sun had scrambled my mind and made me hallucinate. What choice did my friends have except to believe them? They all knew how desperate I was to be a part of a strange adventure. It didn't seem unreasonable to think that my mind invented a story when my body couldn't find one. But I know the truth. I know what I saw and what they saw and what they had to do in order to protect themselves. I know there's something deadly in the Ozarks. Next time I'm going to take its picture. I recently experienced a disturbing series of events that are hands down the scariest thing that ever happened to me. I work at a demolition company, and we were hired to raise a house in a suburb of Omaha, Nebraska. The house was in foreclosure and sat abandoned for many years. The bank was unable to sell the property, and the house began to deteriorate, becoming an eyesore in the neighborhood. Ultimately, the bank decided to tear it down while it considered what to do with the lot. I admit the house was a bit creepy in its rundown condition, but that didn't mean it was haunted. It's not like we heard rumors about it either, and it wasn't anything that crossed my mind as we did the initial inspections. That is, until we went in the basement and noticed an area of carpet that looked like it was stained with black mold. The carpet wasn't wet or anything, but after we tore it up, we found a trap door hidden underneath. It was closed pretty snugly, and when we pried it open, we discovered a small cubicle, about five feet by five feet, with the walls and floor comprised of wooden planks crudely put together. The odd thing was, carved into them were these weird symbols. At first I thought they were satanic, but upon closer look, they were something else, maybe something archaic and pagan. Stranger still, there were words etched into the planks, but it was a language I didn't recognize. Scattered on the floor were several charred, decomposed bird skeletons and other small bones. It looked like some kind of ritual sacrifice or offering. Who knows what its purpose was, but it wasn't something that would stop us from doing our job. We completed our inspection, made sure all the permits were in order, and were scheduled to begin demolition the following day. The job would take about five days total. The first day went off without a hitch, but the second day we ran into mechanical and electrical problems with our hydraulic excavator and other equipment. Incidentally, it happened just as we were digging up the basement in that cubicle. The machinery was fine before. There's no reason why it should suddenly crap out on us. Later that night, the really weird stuff started happening. After my wife and kids went upstairs to bed, I was in my home office working on a bid when I heard people talking in the living room. I thought my wife and kids came back downstairs, but when I called out to them, they didn't respond. I walked out to the living room, and the voices suddenly became whispers, like they knew I was coming and tried to quiet down. The living room was dark, but I could still make out the silhouettes of furniture, and there was clearly no one there. But in the split second before I flipped the light switch, I swear I saw a tall, shadowy figure standing in the far corner. It stood maybe seven feet, and I could make out the outline of a trench coat and top hat. As soon as I turned on the light, the voices stopped, and the figure disappeared. Sure enough, the living room was empty. I thought I was seeing and hearing things. Then I felt this really malevolent vibe as chills ran up my spine, I didn't want to be downstairs alone anymore, so I closed up my office and went upstairs to bed. A few hours later, I was awoken by the sound of loud footsteps running back and forth in the hallway. It didn't seem to wake up my wife, so I got up to see what was going on. As soon as I opened the bedroom door, the footsteps stopped, but at the end of the darkened hallway, I saw that tall shadow figure with the top hat again, just standing there. I quickly turned on a light, but again the figure disappeared. I have to admit it shook me, so I left the light on. It was hard to go back to sleep, and I kept drifting in and out, waking up at every little sound, real or imagined. In one of my stupors, I swear I saw that shadow figure standing at the foot of my bed, but as soon as I snapped awake, it was gone. 
It left me petrified with this overwhelming feeling of dread, and I felt like it was just playing with me. The next day at the site, I was exhausted and noticed the other guys looked just as sleep-deprived as me. We got to talking and I found out that each of them saw the exact same shadow figure with the top hat in their own homes. We were all spooked. We couldn't help but think about that cubicle in the basement. Did we disturb something we weren't supposed to? Was it some kind of witchcraft? We tried to get to work but ran into the same mechanical problems as the day before. Finally, I suggested getting a priest to come and bless the site before continuing any further. Everyone agreed, even the one guy that wasn't religious and didn't believe in the supernatural. We went to my local church and told one of the priests what was going on. He listened and could see how scared we were. He came down to the site and blessed the area and said some prayers. Then he was gracious enough to go to each of our homes and say some prayers there as well. It seemed to do the trick. The next day we had no issues with the machinery and were able to get back on schedule. In fact, we were so eager to demolish that house, we actually finished a day early. None of us saw that shadow figure again either. It took me a few days to settle down and stop peering into the darkness to try to find it. I still have no idea what it was, why it appeared, and how it connected to that house. Even though the priest seemed to put an end to it, I feared for whatever would be built on that lot and for whoever would eventually move in there. By the grace of God, I hope the prayers were strong enough to keep it away for good. Back in 2008, with the economic downturn, I lost my job. The job I'd had in finance got completely upended. I knew I'd need to reinvent myself, and I even went back to live with my parents in Utah while I figured things out. I ended up going in a completely different direction and enrolling in a police academy. I appreciated being able to move back home for a while. It was mutually beneficial since I was able to help my mom and dad out a lot around the house while I was in training. They also said it made them feel safer than ever. On my end, the field training that I was taking created an awareness I'd never had before. My parents' house is on a secluded private drive. It's a two-story house with a walkout basement. During the time that this all happened, they had left town for a couple weeks to visit my sister in another state. I was taking care of the house and their dog, Henry. He was a collie mix and the most obedient and sweetest dog ever. During that time, I was studying for the post, which stands for Peace Officer Standards and Training Board, requires a written test as part of the preparation for the officer selection process. It's similar to college entrance exams like the ACT or SAT. So I'd been studying a lot for it and had invited my fellow cadet Nick over so we could work together one evening. It was getting dark. Henry the dog was in the living room with us and was sleeping when he suddenly jumped up and looked out the window growling. I had never heard him make noises like that before. His hair was up from his neck to the base of his tail. I looked out the window but couldn't see anything and I closed the window and the curtain. It was a bit unusual to see Henry acting so strange. Nick was wondering if Henry had heard a coyote or something. I went and checked the locks with Henry following me. I knew that the closest neighbors were also out of town. Their house was just on the other side of a few larger trees, so I felt pretty alone up there. Henry calmed back down and went to lay on the rug, so I calmed down too. I figured if he was relaxed, everything was probably fine. We were quizzing each other from the practice test, and suddenly Henry went crazy again. He was growling and snarling viciously, which was totally out of character for him. I turned out the lights and looked out the living room window. I didn't see anything on that side of the house either. I wanted to get a good look out the back of the house, but to do that, I would have to go downstairs. However, Henry would not follow me. I decided to go look out from our back deck. It was a high deck that didn't have any stairs off of it, so I figured I'd be safe. I turned off all the lights and the outdoor floodlights so I could get some night vision. Then I slowly opened the door and went out on the deck. It was quiet outside. The driveway was empty and the area by the shed was clear. But still it felt creepy out there 
and I had a strong urge to go back inside. But first I made myself go over to the far side of the deck and look out in the direction of the neighbor's house. They did have their outdoor lights on, and under their deck I spotted a moving shadow. It looked tall. At first I thought it was a man standing by the deck support. It crept further out from under the deck and I just gasped. It had to be seven feet tall, and it was no man. It continued to come closer to me and soon I could see that it was staring right at me as it approached. All I could focus on was its eyes, its freaky eyes. I feel nervous just writing this. It felt like evil was looking at me. It looked grayish. It was naked and pale and so gaunt looking. I could see its ribs straining against the skin. Soon it was right below the deck and was crouched down on all fours and I got so creeped out. I had the feeling that if it wanted to, it would be able to spring all the way up to the deck. It kept looking at me and hissing and clicking. Then it sprinted away into the trees faster than I would have ever believed it could have moved. I ran back into the house and locked the door. I grabbed the dog and yelled at Nick to follow me down the hall to my dad's study. I locked the door and took two guns out of the gun safe and loaded them. Nick was freaked out because I wasn't saying anything. Just loading guns that he didn't even know we had, or that I knew how to use. Then I positioned myself and watched out the window with my loaded pistol while I tried to explain to Nick what I had seen. I couldn't even tell if I was making any sense as I talked. I told Nick to call the precinct and get somebody out there. He was reluctant because I think he thought I was going crazy. But he did it, and the precinct sent out a squad car. We stayed locked in that room until the police arrived. By the time they did, Henry had calmed down so I was really hoping that the thing had gone. The officers came and did a whole sweep of the outside area, even over at the neighbors, and looked for signs of anything unusual, but they didn't find anything. I didn't back down from my story, though. That thing was real, and I could tell it was dangerous. I think they believed me. I mean, I wasn't known as a flaky person, but there wasn't much they could do. This story still freaks me out so much even though I never saw that thing. Whatever that was could be anywhere, and I do not want to meet it alone or unarmed. There's something in the Appalachian Mountains that you got to see to believe. I was walking through the woods with my boyfriend a few weeks ago, and he was doing that thing he does that I hate, which is walking so fast that I can barely keep up pet peeve of mine. Also, I was getting winded, and this was not what I was thinking when I said I wanted us to do a day hike. I was thinking of a pleasant afternoon, kind of romantic, but he was turning it into a forced march and I was getting frustrated. A couple times I had to call out to him to wait up, and he'd just stand there looking all impatient. Anyway, now I was really ticked off, so I decided to teach him a lesson. The trail was winding around, and he was getting further and further ahead of me, and when it rounded a corner he just disappeared from sight, like he didn't even care that he was so far off in front. So I just thought, to hell with him, I'll give him reason to worry, and then maybe he won't do it again. So I went off trail. Now I'm not stupid, I know you can get lost easy, but I was irritated, and wanting to prove a point. The whole time I'm doing this, I'm keeping my ears peeled, thinking I'd hear Brian start calling my name any minute. I walked for like 10 minutes, trying not to go too far from the trail, just kind of walked parallel to it. I had to stop and pee, so I went behind a big tree, even though I wasn't visible to the trail, but habit, I guess. While I was squatting there, I heard a rustling up above me. At first I thought it was just squirrels or something, but then I had this weird feeling like someone was watching me. It freaked me out, especially because I was in this vulnerable position, so I quickly got my pants pulled up. I started walking again, and I kept looking behind me thinking someone was following me. Just a weird feeling, but my body must have known something because the hair on my arms was standing up. At first, I told myself I imagined it. Then I started wondering if it was my boyfriend, and maybe he was going to jump out at me to teach me a lesson. I hate that, by the way, when someone scares you for a laugh. I stopped at one point and talked into the woods behind me saying, Okay, Brian, I hear you, and then I waited, but he didn't come out. 
The longer I looked at the woods behind me, the more uneasy I was getting, so I started walking again. I was really disappointed that I wasn't hearing Brian yelling my name. I mean, did he not even notice I was gone? Or he just didn't care? My brain was taking me in all directions. I then stopped to listen again, thinking he had gotten far away when I heard this noise above me. A crackling of branches and leaves swishing. Kind of sound. I got a little nervous because it sounded too big to be squirrels or anything else you'd normally find in a tree. It sounded big. I had just decided to turn around and start reversing my path back to the main trail when I heard a cough. A human cough. No mistaking it. But it came from above. I looked up into the branches of this big oak tree, one of those ancient ones, and at first I didn't see anything, but all of a sudden I saw movement, and I saw him. At least parts of him. It was a man, but he looked odd, like really hairy. Now, I'm not talking about Bigfoot kind of hairy, this was just a really hairy guy with an overgrown beard and long, shaggy hair. The skin on his face looked similar to a dark tan, I guess, with facial hair covering most of it. It was the fact that he was up in a tree, way off the trail, watching me, that completely freaked me out. I looked up at him and yelled, Stay away! I was thinking this was the creep that had watched me peeing a few minutes ago when I heard that noise. But that didn't really make sense, because that incident had happened about 20 yards back, and I don't think people can just move from tree to tree like monkeys. Right after I yelled, the guy jumped down to a lower limb like he was coming for me. His eyes were focused on me, and he didn't even need to be careful or look around as he came down. Now all eyes were no me. I lost my cool and just ran like hell back in the direction I'd come. I was frantic, trying to run as fast as I could, but I had to swerve quickly a few times when I realized I had taken the wrong way. Next, I heard a thud behind me and I started praying, but a second later the guy grabbed me from behind, one arm in a headlock, the other arm around my shoulders and chest. I started screaming my head off and grabbed at his arm, scratching and trying to pull him off me. His arm was weird looking, and that frightened me even more than I already was. Super muscular and he had really dry skin on his hands, but it was all wrinkled like a raisin. His arm was hairy, all the way down to his wrist. I didn't turn around to see his face, but I got to tell you, the guy had the worst smell of any living creature I've ever experienced. I'm screaming my head off, and he's trying to drag me over to a tree, and he's winning. Suddenly I hear my boyfriend, thank God. He was calling my name frantically. He sounded pretty close, but couldn't see me, and that's when the hairy man let me go. I yelled, here, and I spun around trying to see where Brian was. I then watched as the man just leapt up into the tree, almost running straight up the trunk. It was supernatural, almost. Super fast, looking like he did it all the time. But I wasted no time running toward Brian's voice, and I didn't stick around to see where the guy went. Brian was there in a clearing, and I ran straight into his arms, shaking like crazy. I blubbered out my whole story, and he held me because I was shaking so hard. Once he understood what I was telling him, he got all tense, looking around like he wanted to find the guy. But I begged him for us to just leave, and he finally said okay, but he made us stop at the local police department and report it. They acted like I was a wacko when I told them the guy was in the trees. But they took my report, and then we just went home. So what the heck was this thing? I'm telling you, it was not a creature like Bigfoot. It was definitely a man. But a man who climbed the trees like a monkey.